Hello, I'm Dan Purvey, and uh, I've just arrived here in the woods, and it's the same camp as last time. I thought I would do a nice little overnight here in my tarp because it's a lovely, lovely spring day. Sun's out, and I think uh, the lowest it's going to go tonight's five to seven degrees, so we've got a fairly warm night out. So I'm just going to find a place to set up my tarp, and then we'll crack on with gathering wood and stuff. So hope you enjoy the video, guys. So I got the ridge line up, same configuration as I showed you in the last video I posted, but this time we're going to be putting it into action and sleeping under it. So let's get this tarp up. Right, there's the tarp fully set up, ready to go to bed tonight. All it needs is the bivy, the roll mat and everything when I go. But that was an absolute nightmare because this ground's extremely, extremely soft. So I've had to use quite thick sticks as pegs because those little 10 pegs I've got just aren't doing it. And if I go around here, I had some difficulty pitching there because there's a tree root in the way. So I eventually got the sweet spot and then hammered the pegs in. And since we've got a lot of wind coming from the moors on this side, I've chose to stake all of my points down just so the wind doesn't get wet late at night. And hopefully the top doesn't fly away if there's a big gust, which I doubt it will because I've, as I said, I've got all them points staked down. So we'll carry on now. We're getting some wood to get the fire ready. Timber, anticlimactic.
Well, I untangled that tree and I got the shift and it's straight over the fire pit lodged in the tree where my coat hanger tree is I like to call it right above me so we're gonna take some logs off there it's a nice dead standing Right, so I've got the top up and the bivvy set up to my liking and I'll just show you what I do and what the setup is. So, first we've got the top, ridge line, you know, and the configuration we've got it in. It's a three by three top, so one and a half meters of overhang and then we've got a nice little floor there. It's not gonna chuck it down tonight, so I'm all right about this. It's not gonna pull up any water. If it was to chuck it down, I would uh, do a slightly different configuration, like a, a tent configuration, like that. And then I would dig channels on either side, so the rain would go down there. But this is fine for me today. In here, got my bivvy bag. My bivvy bag is just the British Army MTP Gore-Tex bivvy. And I've got a nice little, little inflatable pillow there. My thermo rest and my sleeping bag. So that should provide enough insulation for tonight. But if it doesn't, in that bag over there, which I can't really reach at the moment, has the silk liner in just to take the edge off if I need it. So hopefully we're gonna have a nice night and a nice fresh breeze somewhere to sleep. But now it's time to start gathering wood for the fire and we've still got a little charcoal left from last time and some logs left from last time so that's a bonus I always like to leave myself a little present for the next time I go anyway so I've gathered my wood now I think I've got about three or four hours worth of wood which should be all right if I need more and I want to stay up later then I'll just get the head torch on and get more There's no point wasting energy but yeah, hopefully this is enough wood for us. Now it's time for the best part of the video. Or maybe the second best part of the video, who knows. Where I get the fire started. Right, so today's tinder, we've got dryer lint. Anyone can get this if you've got a tumble dryer at home. It's just this ball of fluff here. 
So I've got the flint and steel and some dry land. Let's see what we can do with it. There it goes. I'm just going to shove some charcoal into there. Keep the fire up nicely, it will. Right, once this fire, I'll build it up with logs a bit. Once it dies down, I'll start making some food. And oh, have I got a treat for you today. So, for today's appetizer, We've got spaghetti bolognese in a can from Tesco. Gourmet, 100% beef. Do you want to know the difference between one of these cans from Tesco and one of those um, meals you get, uh, MRE packs you can get from the shop? This costs 70p, while one of them MREs costs about a fiver. And this has more calories in it. This has actually got 318 calories in it. And a lot of their MRE style packs that aren't military are very low on the calories, so you're sacrificing a little bit of extra weight in a tin can, sacrifice an extra space in your wallet, and you get one of these. That's easy, eh? That's on there, isn't it? Bon appetit. Lovely. Right, that's red hot. That should cook in seconds, hopefully, like last time. I remember what I was saying last time about the stone. Well, there you can already see it doing its magic. There you go. All fully cooked. So, I'm going to eat this now. And then we'll get on with the next part of the video, which is a surprise. As I've finished dinner, we've got a very, very special treat. So, today we're going to do the first day of the beer review. Now this was an idea suggested by my brother, who's also been on one of my videos. Check that out, I'll link it at the end of this video. And he suggested that I should do a beer review. And that's what I'm going to do, because I love beer and I love camping. So, the beer we'll have today is Vocation Special Edition Triple Vision Triple IPA. There's the back of the can. I'll just read that out now. So. Triple vision. Some say there's a crowd, but in our opinion, it's the more the murkier, lovers of the bold, followers of the unconventional. This triple IPA has got you in its sights. I like that. So it says it's soft, thick, and juicy. Go from strength to strength to strength with the deeply complex and aromatic triple threat of Calypso, Columbus and citra hops so if you didn't get that guys uh, the hops that are used here uh, we've got calypso hops citra hops and columbus hops and that's what makes it a triple ipa the brewery is just another factory making a product it's our people and their passion that make this our vocation so that's vocations little uh word on the back as well 
so yeah we've got it's a standard IPA or so it seems until you look at the percentage so it's 10 percent so they're using a lot of ingredients a very thick mash to make this and it feels heavy in the can it feels sloppy it feels good let's try it out eh? So I've just spilt a little bit on the rim there. You can see it's just a, a nice, nice hazy IPA. Now we're gonna see what this tastes like. Vocation. What do you think this is gonna taste like? Yeah, 10%, it's gonna be strong. That's beautiful, that. It's like drinking hard liquor, it's that strong. Really thick. Citrusy. Really strong hoppy taste. You know, it's really, really, really powerful on the tongue and on the palate. Mm, it's got a really nice smoky aftertaste as well. Or maybe that's just me inhaling the smoke from the fire. Who knows? We'll know by next time if the next beer also has a smoky aftertaste. So, what am I going to rate this Vocation Triple IPA? I'm going to rate this IPA a 9 out of 10 because there's always room for improvement. But I'm going to rate it as a beer, as a 7 out of 10, because I'm biased. IPA is my second favourite type of beer. Porter and Stout would be my favourite. Now I'll put them under the same bracket, but Porter and Stout, there's a lot of complications and technicalities on Porter and Stout, on what is a Porter and what is a Stout. But less about that, this is an IPA. Indian Pale Ale, if you didn't know what it stood, stood for. And uh, IPA, the name comes from when we used to transport ale over to India for the trips. And they would have it a high percentage, so it would uh, survive the journey longer and it wouldn't go bad, or so I've been told. This is beautiful though, really thick and really strong. So I got this today at Tesco. I think it was 450 for a can. And that's, that's pretty expensive for a can of beer, but if you go into town, you'll be paying like a fiver for a pint, so, and a pint of something that's like five, five and a half percent. Now, this is double that. It's not a pint, yeah. It's, uh, it's less than a pint. But, it certainly makes a difference in percentage. And I really like a high percentage beer, because I find the higher the percentage, it adds a lot more flavour. Now, I've been caught out a few times. I've had some weaker beers that do quite, taste quite nice and quite strong for what they are. But I really like the strong, thick taste when you use more ingredients and the beer's a thicker mash and it's a thicker brew and it's perfect in every way. Anyway, Vocation, you did a great job brewing this one. Right here, 10 o'clock, bedtime. Let's leave that fire going, we can see it nice from, from the set up there. I've got me curtains up. The forest has been very creaky tonight, there's a lot of creaks going on. And you can hear a lot of lap wings as well, because uh, they're in mating season at the minute. So they're just going wild. And yeah, hopefully I don't get kept up by the forest creaking and dropping branches everywhere but I've slept too worse but sometimes you just get those nights right that's me see you all for breakfast right so that's me finished had a fairly warm night's sleep last night could have definitely been worse but I was nice and toasty so I'm just gonna pack everything away now and then I need to get a swift getaway so no breakfast this morning Right, so that's the end of the video today. If you enjoyed it, like and subscribe. If you didn't, do the exact opposite. I'm Dan Purvey, and I'll see you in the next video.